What is up guys? It is Tony here and today we are taking a look at something that I discovered recently, well rediscovered, because I've known about this game stream thing for a long time, but it's never really worked that well on a laptop until now. So it actually turns out that it works on the M1 uh, MacBook Air. I mean, it's known to work pretty much on anything, but the thing about the M1 MacBook Air is being that it has Wi-Fi 6, you actually get playable streaming here, which looks crisp most of the time, like 90% of the time. Uh, of course, because Wi-Fi is inconsistent, you'll occasionally get um, some pixelation and some ugly stuff. But considering I only get 300 megabits a second on my internet connection right now, this is pretty promising because if you were running at gigabit, you'd probably have pretty sharp gameplay 90% of the time. So this is actually streaming from a Mac Pro from 2009. So this M1 is running GTA 5 with the assistance of a, of a Mac Pro with Xeons. Interesting, right? <laughs> Maybe the geeks out there. But that being said, yeah, we, we're doing it. We're here playing some GTA 5. Uh, the delay is honestly about equivalent to playing on a 30 hertz television, which, you know, isn't that pleasant, I'll be honest, but it is playable. It is like playing uh, an Xbox 360 back in the day, just with way better graphics. Um, you are seeing, I believe, a 720p stream, but on this small display, with the retina doing its upscaling thing, it looks sharp. So, it's quite pleasant. I don't have a controller to hook up because I don't have a USB-C controller that'd work. Um, so, we're going to have to just use the keyboard here. But it loads pretty quick. Oh, that's not the right resolution. It's running at my widescreen resolution. Okay, I fixed it. So, yeah, like, that is extremely sharp get in here because there is nothing there's no trickery to see here this is dang sharp wi-fi 6 flexing here and only on 300 megabits a second i'll show you that in a moment on speed test just to verify it but yeah um this this is super playable but like i said it is totally like playing on a console back when uh, all consoles ran at 30 FPS, which, you know, if you don't like that to the point where you need a gaming laptop and are willing to deal with the inconveniences of gaming laptops, sure, go for it. But for light gaming, ooh, little little lag going on there. Uh, for light gaming, this is pretty nice, but I would recommend 110% having a gigabit connection. Because if you have gigabit, this has got to be darn, darn impressive. And considering you could pretty much play any game, which I'm going to show you in a second, some 32-bit action, that is pretty fun. All right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and fire up Skyrim, which is a game that if it did run through Rosetta Translation, uh, if, if Rosetta could translate 32-bit, uh, onto Catalina and Big Sur, we would actually be able to have a really nice experience playing Skyrim because the specs could definitely handle maxing out Skyrim. Um, but unfortunately, we are limited to streaming here. Let me see if I can get those. Again, beautifully out. sharp. Honestly, this game because it's a little bit older, the seven twenty p the seven twenty p lends itself better to Skyrim. What does this guy want? Oh yeah yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, overall, I'm really surprised by the streaming experience. Um, considering you're just streaming video and sending uh, inputs, the, the MacBook Air does not get warm at all. And if you really do the math on that, that basically means that you're watching YouTube videos. And because you're basically watching a YouTube video uh, to play games, running uh, games through streaming in your home, you're going to get 15 hours probably. Uh, 10 plus hours, definitely, of streaming games. So far, I've spent 
eight plus hours without charging it playing uh, Steam games on stream and, you know, didn't really hammer the battery that hard um, because really you're not even hammering the CPU that hard when you're doing this. Um, it's all on your uh, all on your desktop. And the thing is, like, sometimes you don't want to sit at your desktop. Sometimes you want to just jump on your laptop. And some people might be surprised to find out that the MacBook Air could double as your home portable gaming console if you have a stationary gaming setup, of course. But that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.